So I've been up all night trying to reset my sleep schedule and uh, that's always dangerous for me. So now I am designing an ion thruster to see if I can propel, I don't know, air, maybe a, maybe a boat. I'm starting on the CAD design now for the uh, supports for the, uh, for the rings of the ion thruster and uh, the next thing I'm gonna design is the supports for the needles. And after that, we will 3D print those. And uh, I'm waiting on an Amazon package with my uh, high voltage transformer because, you know, I was thinking about this at like 5.30 in the morning. I decided I'd order the parts and uh, Amazon same day came through and, you know, we'll see what time we get here. But this 3D print is probably gonna take a while. So we'll uh, get back to you then. So in designing the uh, cathode, is that right? I forget which one that, that comes later, but uh, in designing the, the needle end, um, I actually had to use some trigonometry, which, uh, you know, I haven't done since, like, high school. So, uh, I found that the height should be 31, and that will make all the side lengths 36. So, I'm using Tinkercad, and I'm going to use a triangle, and just put a smaller triangle inside of it, and put three circles around the edge. Uh, to give it kind of, kind of that look. And uh, I'm proud of myself for remembering my trig, and uh, then I actually checked it with paper. Uh, you probably can't see it, but I did the thing we learned in fifth grade with the, the curves, you know, plotting out a 60 degree angle. I don't know, I thought it was cool. All right, the modeling is done, and it's on the printer right now, it's heating up. Uh, so we have three holes that are 36 millimeters wide, and then I have these uh, holes for the needles, the uh, anodes, well, whatever, um, that are exactly spaced to the midpoints. Um, and I'm printing at like 0.2 mill millimeter layer height with 20% uh, infill. I just want it to be over fast. Uh, so it should be done in about an hour, um, and we will see. In the meantime, I'm going to design or find a, uh, a boat hole to put these things on in case I want to figure out, like, I want to make a boat with it. One of these days I will learn to check the layer view before printing. Uh, this would have printed just the outside of each layer. I don't know why, but my settings were wrong. I just, you know put them to defaults and now it's fine again. But I, I, I don't know why that happened, but I, I just needed to start checking the layer view before I print things. You would think I would know by now. That's what it should look like. It has, you know, good infill on top and bottom, you know, no large holes or anything. Even this, you know, it had some pretty large holes in the bottom layer. But uh, yeah, that should work now. So I'm planning to use aluminum beer cans for the cathode, and I'm gonna sand them and polish them and uh, roll them up into a tube, which will fit inside of the cloverleaf pattern. Um, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, the diameter or the, the circumference that I need is 110 millimeters uh, for, for each one. Um, but the diameter of the, or the circumference of this is only 204. So that means I will get a maximum of one out of each can because I'm looking at about 60 or 600, 60 millimeters. And so I, I can't do them, do two that way. And it's just too short to do it, uh, to do get two out of each can that way. So that means I will have to drink one more beer. It's like, 10.30 in the morning, but uh, I've been up all night, so this doesn't count. So what we have here is 
I found my uh, step up transformer for my cathode cold cathode tube lights. Uh, I think it's something around 2.6 kilovolts. Not super powerful, but I'm just doing this as a proof of concept. Uh, this is meant to run off of a computer power supply at 12 volts. So I have my regular power supply set to 12 volts. And let me just drop this needle in there. This is the needle that I plan to use for the final project. Uh, it's very, very sharp. And when it arcs, it uh, kind of destroys itself immediately. However, when it, uh, it should uh, be really good with the ionization energy because of how ridiculously small the point is. Anyway, so turn on the power supply. So this right here, I don't know if this is a common feature on power supplies. This is an interference meter. So it, it measures the RF and how noisy the electronics are around you. And uh, when I switch this on, it goes pretty much to max. So this is uh, pretty damn noisy. Uh, so, you know, fun stuff. Anyway, I'm trying to be as careful as I can here, but if I just touch this carefully to the tip, get a nice little plasma arc. Now, this is not ideal for the final product. Uh, we actually want to be ionizing the air without having an actual plasma arc, but it's kind of cool and pretty fun. That's uh, extra hot and extra dangerous. I'll give you a nice little buzz and touch that. So now that I have the new pipe, it's actually a little bit bigger than what I needed. I, I got, I think it was like a three and three eighths, no, one and three eighths added diameter. Um, but you know, the measuring tape I used was not exact in the store. So now we're off by about four millimeters. I have 34 millimeters here and 38 and a half on this, so it's it's just not gonna fit in there. I was hoping that maybe I could like fudge it in there, melt it a little bit, get it warm, but that's just not gonna happen. And my Amazon package isn't gonna be here for a little while anyway, so. Might as well just, uh, well, I did the math. I could upscale it by 114.7%, which would get it to the right size holes. However, since I had planned to use it with aluminum, I engineered a little bit of overlap in the circles inside. So these would actually be touching each other, which uh, these pipes don't have a lot of give to them. So I'm actually gonna increase the size of the holes in the original CAD drawing and uh, you know, space them out perfectly. And uh, that, should, that should get it done. So I have a power supply here, putting out 12 volts at five milliamps, super, super low current, um, wired into this, which is a two kilovolt uh, transformer for cold cathode tubes. And I have a needle and a pipe soldered to the alternating, soldered to the uh, AC poles inside there. Um, and it is currently producing very, very small amounts of thrust. I'm gonna see if I can get it on camera. So there's positively charged ions coming off of the needle, uh, pushing through the pipe and, and finding their ground somewhere in the pipe. It's creating like a, like a magnetic field. And as those ions move through the air, they impart a force on the actual neutral air molecules themselves. I missed the unboxing because I was uh, too excited. But uh, here we have it set up, the new one, uh, 40,000 volts. And uh, here goes nothing. We're running it at four and a half volts right now. The max is six. And that's gonna beep because it doesn't know what it's doing. Um, hmm. Definitely don't like touch that or anything. 
try and move it a little bit closer, see if it can actually... Oh, right. All right, well, if that's not uh, falling electrons, then I don't know what will. Alright, so we're in the dark here because we have a new setup to show off. And what we have is batteries. Batteries in a custom made housing uh, running in parallel at 4.2 volts uh, into a little switch and then into the actual converter. And then here's the, uh, the original three banger setup. And this, when turned on, makes a horrible noise, but you can actually see, you can see the plasma at the tips of the uh, thrusters. And this makes a pretty noticeable amount of wind. Look at that. You drop this in there and it's, it's getting blown away. You know, you, you can really see that. I mean, there's, there's really not even any purpose for a smoke test now, but uh, I don't know if I got that, but it's it's absolutely just totally blowing. Absolutely. So I had this boat printed, or well, I printed the boat, and it is entirely too top heavy. I mean, I, sh I should have known, really. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, it's also off center. It's probably because it's wet. Um, I'm gonna cut both of those stocks down by an equal amount and uh, try again. So, this, uh, I did a cursory search on YouTube, and I found no results, so I'm going to officially call this the world's first ion engine propelled boat. It's, uh, it's got the batteries at the front, it's got the switch to turn it on, um, here's the transformer, and make sure that these two wires are pretty far apart, because otherwise they will become a taser, which I learned the, the hard way, first time I put it in the water. Um, so anyway, here's the same setup with the needles and the tubes uh, just wired up inside the boat. And uh, it's a bit heavy, a bit top heavy, so I have this tape on the bottom for, for weight just to keep it uh, steady in the water. But, let me just drop this in here and switch it on. It's moving. It's absolutely moving. Picking up speed. Might be a little bit off center, but uh, that's okay. I've done it. I've made an ion engine propelled boat. And it's super scary. I don't want to take it out of the water now because it's it's live. But, you know. Yellow, right? Ooh, that made sounds when I touched it. <laughs>